What's up besties? I hope you're having a stalking day. Uh, this time I wanted to talk about how uh, social media impacts our art and maybe complain a bit. Especially that, especially like nowadays, it honestly sucks for many artists. Uh, and I'm talking from a perspective of someone who uh, never was very successful on any side, uh, but has been here for a long time observing and listening to what other people say. Um, I'd start from the fact that art is very subjective, so when I'm talking about like some trend uh, in a negative way, I don't mean that the art that can be like classified as that or associated with this trend is um, bad. I, I just mean that there's a trend and maybe it isn't that good for us or maybe people uh, participate in it hoping to get certain results but then don't get these results and it impacts their self-esteem. Uh, we'll get to it. Uh, my point now is that I'm not here to criticize art itself because I don't think it makes that much sense. Art is very, very subjective. And I guess at the beginning, it's also worth to mention that uh, for some people, social media can be great, actually. Uh, like, you know, opening more job opportunities. Uh, both when it comes to finding people to commission you and maybe using different sites to try to sell your stuff, both uh, stuff you made yourself or just sell your designs on different products, uh, like, I don't know, pins, stickers, t-shirts, tote bags, whatever. Um, if you manage to get a bigger audience, you get to stay in touch with them uh, much closer than you would uh, without it. But it seems like a lot of it depends not only on your art, uh, but also on luck. So while the more well-known artists on social media are, are undoubtedly very skilled and the art is very cool, uh, there is also plenty of people that may be capable of somewhat comparable uh, things but just aren't that successful online. I guess one very mysterious thing about social media is the algorithm. And I'm calling it mysterious because while there are trends we can observe and understand, some things just seem hidden from the public. What we do know, though, uh, may not be the best for artists uh, because social media prioritizes activity, so the amount of likes, comments, or whatever else there is on the site, this one is obvious. Um, frequency of lab uploads, which, which is the first bad one for us because it's hard to constantly post new stuff, uh, creating them takes time. And I don't know about uh, other people, but I don't really like re-uploading. Um, I know that some people do, I just feel weird. I do re-upload on my Instagram sometimes when I feel like, when I feel bad that I didn't have anything new to post in like two weeks <laughs> or something. But all in all, I don't like it. Uh, I, I'm not going to unfollow someone for doing it, or I'm not going to get mad at them. I just feel bad doing it myself. It feels like this re recycling post. Actually, my, the best my Instagram has ever been doing was a few years ago. Uh, by the way, I'm going to <laughs> kind of self-promote, I guess, this whole video I usually don't, but yeah, I'm mentioning social media that I have. You can go to my de description, please. <laughs> but yeah, the best my Instagram has been doing was a few years ago when I was doing like Inktober or May and uploading new stuff every single day, which is a bit frustrating because my art has very significantly improved since then. And I think people would like it uh, more uh, if they saw it, but I'm just simply unable to create a new piece every day. It just takes too much time, you know, I have life outside of that. After all, uh, and if you don't post an ad, the audience won't wait for you if they follow you for your art and not for you as a person. The algorithm is going to forget you like your dad who went out to buy milk 20 years ago and just replace you with someone similar enough for the audience to be satisfied. Uh, I guess it's kind of frustrating to see uh, people, you know, doing just some quick mirror selfie and getting so much more engagement than you do because it takes them like 20 seconds most and takes you like uh, five, six, probably more hours depending on what you do. 
And rushing with just pumping out all this new content can lead to just straight up burnout, either because you're overworked or, or because you're compromising what you really want to make with how fast you have to post it. One thing YouTube also likes is how you watch time. But again, creating a video, especially a long run, takes time. We can't just upload long videos that often. Um, one thing I've seen getting a lot of attention would be clips from like streams, where one streamer, uh, when where streamers would just uh, talk about the subject, or more often a reply to some video or something for like an hour or two, and then just upload that to YouTube. And I must say, these tend to be very entertaining, and they create it rather quickly. So there is abundance of content, and you know. When I finish one two hour long video, I can get straight to another. I, I don't need to wait a month for the, the creator to make it. But I just don't know how well that can translate into forms of art like drawing or painting, because maybe you could like react to some sounds while I'm drawing or painting, but you can't really like watch anything. And you're probably too focused on doing that to like actually talk uh, in an interesting way um i don't know i've seen some drawing streams they can be interesting but they usually aren't i've never seen anyone just doing this thing with uploading long clips from streams and being su successful or even just doing that in the first place i don't even know how it would look I guess one thing we have to keep in mind is that these companies responsible for different sites aren't doing it for you. They they don't care about you. They want you to bring them profits in form of people engaging with your stuff on their sites. Uh, so they only care about your success if you can benefit them. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that if whatever you're posting isn't getting that much attention, even compared to your own older posts, it doesn't necessarily mean it's not as good. It may have more to do with the algorithm. So you shouldn't be too harsh on yourself with that. Uh, like I said, I know my art improved, <laughs> but, but if the engagement won't show it, so be it. I care about my art more. I'm not going to compromise uh, to that degree. And I guess here lies my problem, which is that social media makes us choose between making what we feel like making and what we like to make and making stuff because we know they will get more attention. I guess it's not just social media artists wanted to get attention since the beginning of art. Like after all, what's the difference between wanting some rich patron to uh, commission you to paint their family portrait to hang in their little palace or something so that other rich people can see it and wanting uh, some suspiciously rich fairy to <laughs> commission you to draw their persona, you know, the same thing. On social media, the trends are just much more obvious. Because there are things that we know can give us more engagement, maybe not necessarily just fame straight up, but definitely some more likes, like doing fan art or following trends and challenges, and just hopping onto popular hashtags, or posting a lot on your stories, but not too much, not to like bore people with them so that they don't just skip the whole thing. That's when it comes to Instagram and creating more of quick drawings instead of focusing on uh, on bigger projects, uh, making stuff that reminds people to like and follow or subscribe. Um, you can see that I never asked to do that because I feel too awkward. But a lot of people do and is and it is helping them, definitely. I've been caught hearing that from a creator I like and then and you know they will just say something like Ooh, like and subscribe and I'm like wait I yeah I should do that I forgot that's a thing uh, I like you I'm going to do that um and you know if someone truly likes doing these things uh, to get more engagement uh, obviously I'm not going to criticize uh, even if someone would prefer to do something else but does that I'm not going to criticize do what you want uh, it's just the sole existence of these things that 
that are there to dissuade us from doing things that are uh, that are true to ourselves that upset me as uh, someone especially that a lot of people are trying but, but very few are actually successful on social media it's kind of like a game at this point uh, when aside from making art you need to also know and apply a ton of tricks to make the algorithm show that art to people and your art has to get people to do all these things like you know like follow share sell both their kidneys and give that money to youtube uh spend at least 15 minutes watching comment something and so on and so forth uh and only then it will keep on showing your art to people uh and yeah, if you want to play this game, good for you. But for people who don't want to do that, uh, they have to have a lot, really a lot of luck to get successful solely of their art. The thing is, uh, also, we like being able to categorize things. We can't objectively categorize and judge art. We still have some measures to do it especially within uh, different types of art, uh, like if we are speaking about realistic art and something in it is not realistic, we, we get to ask a question on whether or not it was intentional, and if it wasn't, we usually classify that as a mistake. Though the happy accident approach is really good too, um, and we often treat recognition on social media, and not just social media, uh, as one of these quantifiers of quality, uh, you know, uh, we have plenty of criteria we use to judge art. So, so whether people like it or not seems like a reasonable one. But then again, this is not this is not how social media works. When you go to Instagram or TikTok, your feed isn't just made out of all posts from all over the world, and you don't have an equal chance to judge everyone's art and just give that positive engagement to the best pieces, obviously. Your feed is specially curated just for you, uh, mostly out of things the algorithm predicts you will like, which includes people you already follow, people who for some reason went viral, and, vir and virality is almost purely lag-based. I'm not even going to talk about this. And people who are already famous, it doesn't give everyone an equal chance because it would because it wouldn't be profitable. You know, you wouldn't like your feed if it wasn't uh, made of things you're interested in. You're interested in. Obviously, you would just uh, quit using that app and then they couldn't profit from you. And one thing on Instagram that annoys me nowadays is also that they're very focused on reels because they're jealous of the success TikTok has been having lately. And they want to focus more on being a video sharing app which can be very difficult for people just doing their paintings or illustrations who maybe just want to stare in their zone and don't want to do the additional work of creating a nice video for all the pieces because just posting time lapses rarely works anywhere now uh, so you have to either say something interesting or you have to like maybe use uh, other background sound like from TikTok sounds but then but then most likely you must make your art something you know related to that sound you can't just take some random sound and not everyone wants to do that uh you know maybe you just want to make something without recording it uh, or you don't have camera if you're doing traditional art all, uh, all you are willing to do is recording it in this manner I do for YouTube, just with, you know, OBS without much editing. Which probably won't look that interesting on Instagram, especially that uh, you'd have to speed it up more so it would be more shaky looking. And then you want to post it like you always did, uh, but now Instagram wants you to edit a whole video to, uh, it's just annoying. Like, I don't think there is a good app anymore that is popular and focuses just on images now. We have Twitter, but I can't imagine using Twitter and not shit posting, so my ads not only gets lost in abundance of other people's posts, but also it gets lost in my own shit posts. Uh, I guess Facebook could be good if it had the anonymity element other places have. 
but it doesn't. Uh, Facebook is very personal and it is decided that it's more commonly used to just connect with your family and friends and maybe be in some groups. That's where family stays actually. Uh, if you're a parent of a teenage or an older child, it, it is actually illegal for you to have Instagram, Twitter or TikTok. It's a very little known fact, but you can only have Facebook. That's where you stay, that's where your place is, you don't go anywhere else. Okay? Okay. And just don't get me wrong with all of this, sharing art is not a bad thing. Uh, it's good, art is a valuable thing to share. Uh, it can make people re receiving it feel better, or think about some important cause, or you know, whatever, I, or, you know, whatever I'm this particular piece has uh, and for the artists you know it helps with their self-esteem and may help them get a fulfilling career and get to create more of it it's good it's good i guess the thing that interests me is the compulsion to do it and to do it in a very particular ways that aren't that strictly related to that art because otherwise you probably won't be successful but coming back to the topic, uh, if you don't want to play the game, I don't think you should give up on posting your art. Look at me, I never did. Uh, but you should be aware that these systems are in place and in a likely case of your art not getting much traction, it's not because there is something wrong with it. Because while there always is room to improve, social media isn't all about equality. I mean, hey, maybe things change in the future, or we'll get lucky. Who knows? Uh, we can have we can have hope. But at the same time, I think that being realistic about it spares us disappointments. It's just uh, social media made this career and success look so easy to achieve. We can see quite a lot of people <laughs> with no actual talent do it. So when we don't succeed, it may feel like a big failure. Uh, uh, it's so easy to share your work with the world. And you see people who manage to build big platforms doing that. Uh, but the thing is, uh, when it's so easy, everyone is doing it. Uh, the market is very oversaturated and competitive. So in the end, it's really not that easy at all to get big. Also, I guess one other thing we need to be aware about is that people can be really mean online. <laughs> Honestly, it never happened to me in regards to my art to like a more memorable degree. I've even met some really cool people. That's one more positive, I guess. That's one more positive, I guess. There are some really cool people to meet online. Um, but I've seen other people get a lot of hate for no good reason. Uh, most of the time it's just kids or just in general people with art styles that don't fit into what we see most commonly or you know people who are still learning and are new to it all. And while I think the ability to you know comment and sometimes criticize the messages art has or just what it was made for or, or you know comment on it in a constructive way is great and it's just a fundamental part of free speech um, going after going after someone just because you don't like what they made visually is stupid and rude especially if they're a small account but I, I don't think we can change that it happens we can't ban every troll because these sorts of people just keep creating new accounts I, lo I love my anonymity online for many reasons, but it also enables people to be dicks with no consequences. Also, I guess I'd be a hypocrite if I pretended that I never called something bad or ugly, <laughs> but if I do, I usually have some additional reasons, like, I don't know, uh, the art is homophobic, so I'll, con so I'll call it homophobic and ugly. I think it's fine to be mean to people who are mean. Maybe I'd actually say it's good to be mean to people who are who are mean. You know, they not only deserve it, but also some form of public shaming uh, can maybe result in them. I don't know, quitting, going away, leaving people they're mean to alone. Uh, 
I don't know, I don't care about their feelings, frankly. Especially that bigoted art tends to have low quality, because at least in my opinion, uh, creating art requires at least some level of being open to new ideas and having some level of empathy and intelligence. And art is very much related with portraying the human experience, but conservatism often demonizes the very human urges, you know, we need to eat, so they're going to call it gluttony, gluttony, we need to, you know, we have some sexual needs, so they're going to call it uh, adultery, and they're going to demonize this, they don't like, uh, hum they don't like the talks of human bodies, uh, even though a lot of the greatest art in the world <laughs> is focused on human body, and you know, it's often naked. It's very often naked because it's just interesting. We we just are interested in this. This is a fundamental part of art. Um, you know, these aren't the only factors to art, but they're important ones. So yeah, if someone is mean, I'm going to be mean. Also, another fundamental question I think we should all ask ourselves is, let's imagine you are the only person in the world Nothing, nothing like too apocalyptic, you're not struggling, scavenging for food or anything, or, or anything. you still have electricity and everything you need, you're not like super traumatized <laughs> by, all your by all your family and friends disappearing. Everything is just like it is now, there's just no people around you. Would you still make ads and how would it look? Would making art that nobody ever sees be fulfilling to you? Just how much what you're making now and how you're making it is influenced by wanting people to see it and have the right and have the right reaction to it. Because on one hand, uh, making people feel things is one of the main reasons we make art. It feels essential to art. But on the other, uh, while I'm not sure how common it is. I still have private art. Do I dislike it? No, I think it's good, I just don't want to share it. And, you know, it's mine and only mine and I like it. But what art would we be making if we didn't have any f financial motives or financial struggles in general and if nothing depended on it and we had uh, full freedom and control over everything and you know there wasn't anyone to criticize us or to view it and anyone we want to impress um being on social media sometimes i get to observe artists really showing their distress over not getting enough engagement from you know just politely asking for it to being rude or actively weirdly like entitled or guilt trippy like that one person who did a whole thread on why, we sh on why you should uh, retweet every single piece of art you see and like because apparently the retweet button and like button have the same function now. It's really sad to see how many people are upset by this, um, but unfortunately I don't think we can fix the system. I don't see how. I guess my only advice is to focus on something else than likes. Don't give up on art, but manage your expectations towards the internet's reception of it. And also, don't be this weird beggar for like retweets or likes. Uh, obviously, like asking politely, like why will you know like and subscribe is one thing, but when people are guilt trippy, uh, it's more annoying and obnoxious, and nobody likes this. So yeah, this type of behavior is not going to help you, unfortunately. I think it's very natural to want our work to be validated. And also I think we're all aware that we can't use the reception and recognition of the artwork as the only categories on, on, which, uh, on which we base its value. <laughs> Some uh, great artists went completely unrecognized in their lifetimes, but, but we love them now. Uh, I don't think anybody sane would see Van Gogh's art as lesser just because he wasn't initially beloved, like he is now. Uh, I guess the question is, what if he wasn't ever recognized as a genius? Uh, how, would, how would that play out when it comes to his art? 
when it comes to his art's wealth, uh, would it change it? Uh, I like to believe, like, if I was presented with art of an unknown artist from that period, and it, like, wouldn't have the influence it had if I saw it, uh, and it, it was, <laughs> I don't know, like, the sunflowers or the starry night or the pink roses, and I like to believe, uh, <laughs> I would like to believe I would still be able to appreciate it just because it's good. Especially that Van Gogh knew his art wasn't uh, what people wanted to see and that he can't get much profit from it. He wasn't really able to sell his paintings. Uh, it was very different from what other people in his times we were making, but he still decided to make it. Um, and I think that has some worth in it. That has to have some worth in it, you know. Uh, I guess we just have to take into consideration that sometimes it feels like our art worth is in its recognition and also that social media contributes to cultivating that mindset by creating this illusion that all good, that all good art will be appreciated there. And a lot of us can't even appreciate a lot of what we make uh, because it's much easier to see all the flaws in your own work than it is in someone else's. Um, after all, I'm the one zooming into this during the most. Maybe I just can't see it objectively and just properly look at the whole picture without searching for errors. I will be its first critic, so... While I value the process of creating, I'm not sure if I can always appreciate the finished piece without showing it to people. And this is... and this kind of sucks, you know? <laughs> I think we should ask ourselves if our goal is for other people to see our art or if you want or if we won't be satisfied if enough people engages with it, uh, because the second mindset just seems unhealthy. <laughs> Our feeds are constantly filled with other artists who get that engagement, and I feel like the more we see that, the more we start associating the art's quality with the number of likes it gets. And I don't think we should do that and maybe we should work more on this mindset and, and just be more thoughtful about how this works and how it does it's not that simple. To end this on a more positive note, I feel like after unpacking all of this, it's easier for me to keep in mind uh, that the lack of engagement doesn't really mean my art is bad and that I'm not and that I'm not improving. I can see the improvements very easily when I compare my newer art to my old art. And that even if I won't be successful, it's okay too. Uh, I can make my art for myself. After all these years of posting, what I care about most on social media is for the handful of people I consider my friends or colleagues to see it. To see it. Uh, because while everyone wants to be famous, if you don't achieve this, it doesn't mean you're bad at what you're doing, it's just not realistic. I think that's all for me for now. I hope at least something that I've said was useful. Um, if you disagree on something or you have any more advice regarding art in general or the drawing in the speed paint or some other thoughts on this topic or, or any other topic uh, or you want to tell me how was your day? <laughs> I'd love it if you left this in the comment section down below. And for now, just stay safe, stay hydrated, and peace.